Welcome to game day, solo game day, and, and the conclusion of Album the Yard Week here at Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. I am your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined by y'all and Cooper the dog, who just chilling. All right. So welcome, everybody watching live around the world, as well as after the fact. I am really excited to bring y'all Small City today, designed by Album the Yard and published by his company, AV Studio Games. Yeah, this is gonna be a good one. This is, uh, I think this is my number one up in VR game. Although it's close, it's close. So before we get started, big thanks to all the patrons who choose to support the show. Certainly do appreciate all the support. Like, subscribe, go to pledgehc.com. If you think the work that I do here on Heavy Cardboard's worth a buck or two a month, I absolutely would appreciate that y'all plus you guys get shout outs on the air whenever you uh, go to pledgehc.com during the show you get access to the slack channel you get all this stuff so yeah lots of reasons to support the show there all right so small city now we have done a stream of small city before but i believe i think it was four player today obviously doing solo one nice thing about a lot of album vr's games is the solo doesn't change a whole lot of rules from the multiplayer game, and that is mostly uh, the case here today. Now, that said, there are some changes, and obviously one of the main mechanisms in the game is kind of eliminated since there aren't other players here. But uh, that said, I'm going to do most of the teach on the front end, and then we will get started. So if you guys have any questions, save them for the end. I'm going to be focused on the teach. And uh, yeah, we'll get started. So if y'all are ready, I'm ready. He's ready. He doesn't care, let's face it. Let's go ahead. Let's get into Small City, shall we? All right. You are a deputy mayor in charge of development of one borough of Small City, a city renowned for its progressive election system, which collects votes eight times per election, truly embracing the slogan, vote early, vote often. Therefore you, uh, therefore, you have but eight turns to secure enough votes to be elected mayor. To be elected, you have to attract more citizens, encourage growth of residential areas for them to live in, and aid the expansion of both the commercial and industrial sectors, although the latter also brings pollution, which, can have, uh, which will also have to be dealt with. If you build suitable infrastructure, the th citizens will undoubtedly vote for you, but beware of making false promises. Right, seems timely. All right, so let's go ahead, talk about what is it we are looking at out here. Well, out on the main board, we have the city council or city, yeah, the city council board. We have votes or victory point track, round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. Then from there, we have various other tracks. We have the uh, various phases of the different rounds. We have the round track there, and then we have uh, the city council right uh, tracks right there. We'll go over that more in detail as we come along. Then we have my personal borough board. Now, the available area of the borough is inside where this marker is. So if you follow these white lines up and across, you'll notice that my borough is only available in this corner for building. As this advances, then this extra little area will be available for building, so on and so forth, until finally all of that area will be available. We have City Hall already built out, and it comes with three citizens already here in my borough. We have the Department of Labor, or the Unemployment Office, as we like to think of it, and we have 11 meeples available to come into the city as the game goes along here. We have the pollution track. Pollution is bad. 
Who knew? All right, then everybody, well, in this case, me, starts with $4. I have one marker over here as well. And then we have the special actions. Now, the special actions over here are going to be one of the phases uh, in this game. There are going to be four available in a given round. And then the other four are not available at the beginning of the game. Or, well, in the first round, as it were. But more details on that as we go along. Then we have three different types of promises. We have the 6-point, the 12-point, and the 18-point promises there. We have additional citizens, which I may be able to acquire as the game goes along. But because I don't want to accidentally grab from there instead of, say, from here... I put them far, far out of reach. Then we have the different resources. We have white, gray, and black. What they are, I don't care, and they don't matter. They are white resources, they are gray resources, and they are black resources, all right? Then we have the buildings that we're going to be able to build here in our small city. Now, there are different types of different buildings that are available to be built. And I will go over these more in detail as we go along. But the green are residential. The yellow are industrial. The blue are commercial. The red are cultural. I also want to point out purple is also a cultural building that is going to be important. If you watched my stream last week of Town Center, you're going to notice a whole what we learned in Town Center is going to be used to actually build up our uh, small city here. Same rules are going to apply, except it's not in a 3D, it's just a 2D grid. Moving on, we have parks over here, and then we have some special buildings, I think would be a good way to call it. We have a uh, police department, we have a fire department, then we have the harbor, we have a refinery, and then we have a stack of warehouses. And lastly, we have uh, some 50-point markers, or vote markers, as it were. I'll use votes and points interchangeably because, well, they are the same thing in this game. Now, every player also comes with a player screen here, but it's one player. So, yeah, it's basically got a whole bunch of player aid stuff. However... There are some other player aids that also came with my edition of this. So we have this one, which basically shows kind of a flow chart of how your citizens will go out. It's language independent, but a little bit confusing if you were not familiar with this. So we're just going to set this aside for right now. But there are a couple other player aids that I found on BGG that I definitely recommend. This one shows for upgrading buildings. This is going to be useful. So this one I'm going to have off screen. And last but not least, actually, probably the best player aid that I have found, and I want to give credit to try and remember who did this one. This is Edge Crusher 100 created this one. So it's a two sheet, or you could do front and back page, which this is basically what I'm going to be using throughout the game so I don't uh, forget any steps. Now, this is basically a more expanded version of that, but it also works as a really good teaching aid as well. Um, so, Edge Crusher 100, files on BGG. All right, so that's everything you guys are actually looking at, but how do you actually play the game of small city. Well, as I mentioned earlier, the game takes place over eight rounds, and each of those rounds has eight phases. Now, I am going to be teaching this. I have previously taught this game, and I'll be honest, I do not remember when we streamed it, but I'm going to be teaching this from the solo point of view, okay? Some of the, I will maybe highlight some differences, but I'm not going to go over them in depth. Just, hey, make note, this is different in a multiplayer game, okay? So keep that in mind that uh, if you're playing this multiplayer, some things are going to be different. All right, so phase one is select special actions. All right, so what that is, is there are going to be four cards dealt out. The mayor is going to visit with the, uh, the VIP or the person uh, which is the first one uh, uh, turned over. That is unavailable for me to choose. Then I can choose either adjacent from the mayor's location. I can choose that for free, spending no money, using my little marker here. So if I want that special action, I would put it there, 
orb there, etc. If I choose the one that is direct opposite from where the mayor is, cost me two bucks. I have four to be able to begin the game. All right, free, free, two bucks. Now, next round, the other four cards are going to be the ones that are available. So these four, and obviously I'm going to shuffle all these up before we actually start the game, but you get the idea, all right? However, in the third round, we're going to take all eight. So the four here and the other four that I just showed you, we're gonna shuffle them all up. So it's not always, this is going to be the four available in the, in the odd rounds and the others are going to be available in the even rounds. No, first round, second round, and then from there, shuffle them up and then deal out four, etc. okay? So that is it for the select special actions phase. So right here, select a card, all right. And then the card is going to convey some sort of special ability or rule breaker that applies for you. All right, easy enough, moving on. The meat of the game is in the second phase, which is building. Now, this is going to be a pretty extensive discussion about building and how you go about building in this game. But this has some really, I mean, this is the meat of the game, so I'm going to spend some time here, okay? So get comfy. There are seven different types of tiles, as we have discussed over here, okay? Each with their own construction conditions. I will go over the details of the construction conditions after we talk about the actual mechanism of building them to begin with, okay? But the general rules for new construction, meaning taking a tile from here and putting it into our burrow, are as follows. Normally, this would be done behind your player screen, okay? But obviously solo, and I don't need to worry about that. Okay, easy enough. So then you're allowed to build three tiles. So three tiles over here, okay? Not three size tiles, three different tiles, or build one tile and increase your burrow size one step, okay? So one tile and increase, or three tiles and don't increase, easy enough. Tiles cost $1 per square that they take up. So one of these single squares right here costs a buck, okay? However, if you build a level two, we'll call it here, a size two, that's gonna cost two bucks. If you build a size, say, uh, three, it's going to cost three, four, five, six, et cetera, et cetera, okay? All right, so moving on from there. Now, you one of your building actions can be to demolish a building Okay, so if you screwed up earlier, because this is very much a uh, game all about placing and choosing the right spots on where you build, if you choose to demolish something, it is $1 per space that you demolish. Now, it's not one per tile. So if I were to demolish this two size cultural building, that will cost me an action and two bucks. I think that's good enough. And it's going to cost us one pollution per space, so if we, de uh, if we destroyed, demolished this two cultural building because it's not where we want it, whatever, it would cost us two bucks and it would cost us two pollution there. So we have the tens on the pollution, we have the other pollution there, okay? I think that's easy enough. All right, now we need to talk about influence. Now, influence, again, I'm going to reference the town center uh, live stream that I did. Buildings are going to influence one another, and they're going to be the rules in which, or the give the permissions to be able to upgrade buildings. A building's influence is going to be every space that is adjacent to that building. So City Hall here, which remember, is going to count as a cultural building, okay? Even though it's purple, it's also red. So the, the adjacent, or uh, yeah, the influence area is all eight spaces that are orthogonally adjacent and all four diagonal spaces as well, okay? There is one exception to that. That is the harbor. The water does not convey adjacency or it does not convey influence, only the two bottom spaces. So in other words, the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight spaces and not all two, four, six, eight, not all 12 spaces for the harbor. Outside of that, influence is going to be for every adjacent space around a building. I hope that makes sense. All right. We're going to skip talking about upgrading right now, and we're just going to talk about straight going into construction. Hmm. I'm going to briefly go over this because I'm not going to try and do an entire teach on the front end here. Okay. But let's talk residential zones here. They cannot be in the influence area of a factory. I'm sorry, of a factory, any yellow cannot be adjacent to green, or it could not be adjacent to the refinery, the harbor, or the warehouse, okay? Because nobody wants to live by industry or any of this stuff. That makes sense, right? So remember, the influence area is surrounding that area. So in other words, you can't have green next to yellow or next to any of these brown. Okay, easy enough, all right? I think we'll leave it at that and go from there. All right, commercial zones, all right? Commercial zones are going to be, uh, a level one is going to be influenced, a level one, two, three, or four is going to be influenced by a level one, two, three, or four residential zone, or how many different residential zones. So again, going back to town center, if there is Let's do something like this just to show you guys. So let's say it were something along the lines of that. We have this commercial zone, this commercial building is influenced by two different residential zones because it is in the direct area surrounding each of those residential. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. All right. Residential zones or residential buildings are going to convey victory points or votes. Commercial zones are going to convey uh, victory points and money, okay? Now moving on to uh, factories and warehouses. So factories here, a level one factory can be placed out here. It just cannot be adjacent to residential buildings. These are going to produce resources. We're going to need resources to be able to build cultural buildings and cultural buildings are going to be used to expand our residential buildings. So you see how all of this kind of builds on top of one another and how they're all interconnected. All right, so industrial here, all right, level ones can just be built out there. Level twos need to be influenced by either a refinery or a harbor. So in other words, we need to have these adjacent to a level one to be able to expand it to a level two and to a level three respectively. All right, moving on, cultural buildings. Cultural buildings do not cost money to build. Remember, each of these other buildings out here are going to cost $1 per space that they occupy when they're built, not when they're upgraded. However, cultural buildings do not require money. Instead, they require resources. So as you can see here, it's going to be what, uh, some mix of white, maybe white and gray, or maybe white, gray, and black resources, depending on which size and what type of building, cultural building that you're going to be building. All right. And unlike the residential, the industrial, the commercial, the warehouses, and the parks, all of these buildings down here in this area, so from the refinery, the harbor, the police station, the uh, firehouse, and all of the cultural buildings, they are only one of each of those, all right? All right. So from there, as I mentioned, there's only one of these, so you can build them wherever you want, but again, not adjacent to residential for the harbor and the refinery. Cultural buildings can be built wherever you want, but again, it's going to cost resources in which to be able to build them. Now, police and fire stations don't really have a purpose in the solo game other than being able to build the buildings. So they're not really terribly important in the solo game. Some of the special abilities of the cultural buildings will not apply to the solo game, but you may want to build the cultural buildings because the more cultural buildings that are adjacent to residential means your residential will be able to grow into a bigger residential, which will get you more victory points. All right, 
Lastly, we will briefly talk about parks. Parks are going to reduce pollution. There is a variant that we are going to be playing with, which is you can only build a level one park. There is some exception when we get up to there when we talk about that. But normally during the building phase, you can only build a level one park. If a park is uh, occupied by one of your citizens during the upgrade phase, then it will upgrade to a level two. If a level two has a citizen in it, it will upgrade to a level three. That is the only way outside of a special rule up here that we're going to be able to place the level two and level three parks. Removes one pollution, removes two, removes three pollution. All right, enough about those. So let's go back to the phase of building. When we build, we're going to have to spend money as well as check all of our conditions for being able to build our buildings. Then after we have built and we have paid the uh, uh, appropriate amount of money, we're then going to possibly upgrade buildings, not buildings that were just built. Buildings that were just built cannot be built and upgraded in the same round that they were built. However, that does not mean that you have to build a lowest level. There may be a way that you're going to be able to build a higher level to be able to begin with. But remember, the turn it's built, it cannot be upgraded. However, any previously built buildings may be able to be upgraded depending on if they have met certain conditions. I will cover all of that as we actually play the game to not go too deep into the weeds on that. All right. So phase one, select a special action, zero or $2. Phase two, build three things or one and upgrade or uh, increase the size of our borough. Phase three is gonna be move citizens. Now, move citizens is one of the core mechanisms in this game, but is mostly removed in the solo game because we don't have other boroughs to go visit because there's only one borough since we're playing solo. However, as we build buildings here in our borough, citizens are going to have to move with some exceptions, okay? Citizens that are in your borough must move unless they are in cultural buildings, in parks, or residential, okay? Or in fire or police. So in other words, any cultural building that has a little square here that shows that it can be occupied, and I will show you this a little bit more. So this little square right there, and this little square right there. Whereas the other cultural buildings you'll notice do not have a little square. Those do not need to be occupied to have a special ability associated with them. And again, you'll notice that there is one here and there is one there. However, in the solo game, they do not have a function because this symbol show it regards tourists and we don't have any tourists because there are no other vi uh, boroughs in which to visit. So any citizens that you have though that are in police station or in the police station, the fire station, in either of these two cultural buildings, on parks or in residential, do not have to move. However, that leaves us with commercial and industrial. A citizen that is on one of these buildings must move to an adjacent or to a different space in your borough. So if you had built this level three or you have this level three and you have one of your citizens out here, say, on that space producing white resources, okay? Moving means, okay, they moved. That's okay, now they're producing gray resources. That's a legitimate move. Or they can move to a completely different building. That's okay. However, whenever a citizen moves from a space, either on a industrial or on a commercial, that space cannot be reoccupied this round by any of your citizens. So in other words, this space that they move from is blocked off from being able to be uh, occupied by one of your citizens. So even though, say, this one moves over there to get a buck, nobody else can go over there. Now, in the multiplayer, that is a different rule. Other players will be able to come over there, but there are no other players here, so we don't need to worry about that. All right, so 
That's moving citizens. They must move if they are on a space on an industrial or on a commercial, they must move to a different location. All right. So that is moving citizens. Then, hey, income. We get money and resources. Tourist income. There are no tourists. So no tourist income in the solo game. Okay, easy enough. Commercial income. Well, let's go back to that. Well, depending on where your tourist, or I'm sorry, where your citizen is, they're going to get either money, so you'll see either a dollar on any of those spaces, or they're going to be able to turn in resources for money or turn money into votes slash victory points, depending on uh, what space they're on. And then depending on what resource they're turning in, we'll be able to get a certain amount of money. So it will be, uh, it'll be uh, two, two dollars for a white resource, three for gray, five for black, or you can buy votes and votes are going to be for every uh, $1 spent, you get two votes, $2, three, $3, four votes, $4, five votes. So it's basically uh, for every dollar spent plus one, okay, for getting votes or turning resources straight into victory points. And that's going to be three, five, and seven for white, gray, and black respectively. You guys aren't going to remember that, but that's okay. We will go back over that as we go along throughout the game. So that is our commercial income. Then our factory income. Well, I mean, resources are income, right? Because we need resources to either turn them into money or victory points or to be able to build cultural buildings, right? Factory income, pretty simple. It gets one type of whatever is, uh, has a worker on it, a citizen. So either a white, a gray, or a black resource. Okay, easy enough. However, where do you store these resources, you might ask? Well, you have two options. You have warehouses, which obviously can hold two resources total, or City Hall. So if you look at City Hall here a little bit closer in detail, and you look at the four places in the corners of it, you'll notice that there is a square and there is a hex. All right, a square shows that it can be occupied by a meeple, by one of your citizens, and a, I said a hex, I think it's, yeah, it's a hex, right? Or is it an octagon? It's an octagon, my bad. Uh, this can also hold resources. So it's either, for each of these four spaces, either a resource or a citizen. All right, so getting our income is the fourth step. The fifth step then is voting. Remember, that's the goal of the game, right? Victory points, voting, same thing. However, how do you get victory points? Well, I'm glad you asked that. You get victory points based on each residence and the number of citizens that are in each residence. So if we take a look at the residences, all right, and these are on a sliding scale a bit, and I will show you, uh, let me see, do I have that handy? I do not. All right. It does not matter, let me rephrase that. The size, the number of squares that a residence will take up, so a level one there, can, is size one, can hold one citizen. A size two can hold two citizens. A size three can hold three citizens, all the way up to six, or five, 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 math. All right, that is the maximum number of citizens that a given residence can hold. However, the number of votes are depending on the number of citizens that are in the residence during phase five. So let's look at this, uh, say, size five residence right here. If this has zero resident or citizens in it, it will score you zero points. If it has one, re one uh, citizen in it, it will score you one point. If it has two, it'll be three points. Three will be six, four will be 10. Or if there is a citizen on all five spaces in this area, which is maximum, that'll be 15 votes. Now, so the number of citizens that are in up to the maximum size is how many votes it can get. One, three, six, 10, or 15. So a size two maximum can get three points because it can have a maximum 
of two citizens in it, okay? All right, I think that makes sense. I think we can move on on voting. But now comes the bad side, because as you produce stuff, that's gonna be pollution. Pollution's bad. If you ever get past 99 pollution, you immediately lose the game. Don't do that, all right? Pollution never resets. It is a permanent damage that you have done to the environment, all right? However, the amount of pollution generated this round determines how many citizens are going to die. Yes, because pollution is bad, all right? Each citizen in your borough, and this would include tourists, but however, we have no tourists, so each of our citizens generates one pollution, except those that are dead, because they ain't breathing, or those that are in City Hall. Because technically they're in our city, but they're not actually active in our city, so these citizens over here do not count, and any that are in City Hall do not count. Everybody else creates one pollution, because breathing and you know trash and all of that stuff. Then each building material produced in your borough, regardless, tourists or not, but again, there are no tourists, generates one pollution. So for each resource that you produce, one more pollution. Each park reduces that pollution by one, two, or three respectively. These do not, do not have to be uh, uh, occupied to remove pollution because they're parks, the trees. I mean, duh, right? All right. So that's how you generate pollution. And what happens? Well, if you generate too much pollution, and we're going to have to determine that, that's going to be about the level of the game for the solo game, how much pollution uh, we have produced each round is going to kill citizens. When we kill citizens, we have to choose an area, an unoccupied area on our board to create a cemetery. And then from there, each dead citizen must be placed orthogonally adjacent to each other dead citizen. So it's just going to grow. If you're familiar with like antiquity, you can't build on top of a uh, cemetery. Nor, and you, yeah, just, and you can't put dead bodies into occupied spaces, unlike antiquity. All right. Then last but not least, we have influence the city council. I say last but not least, essentially last but not least. So we are now up to step seven here, okay? Step seven says we are going to, we have two uh, markers here. We have four rows that we're going to be able to advance as we go along. Now, some prerequisites here. Every time you advance a step, you must pay either the amount of money or the number of victory points, i.e. votes, that's shown below that column that you are moving into to be able to move into that space. So at the beginning of the game, to be able to advance one, you're gonna have to pay one point or one buck. All right, so there are four different rows. Another thing, whenever any of your markers, you only have two of them permanently throughout the game for these four columns. Whenever one of your markers reaches the last space, it's locked and permanently cannot move from that space again. However, up until that space, you may choose to reset that marker to any other row if you wish. However, you are never allowed to have two markers in the same row, all right? So whenever you move it into a new space, you're going to be able to get some benefit for doing so, all right? The first row, technically called the Department of Industry, you get resources, one white or two white and a gray, et cetera, et cetera. That's pretty self-explanatory, easy enough. But remember, you do have to pay to move into that space. All right. Now, when you switch rows, I also should point out that you must start back over at the first column. So for instance, if I am here and I really want to be able to get more uh, citizens down into my space there, well, to move it from there, I do not move it to this space, no, no it comes back to there, okay? But obviously I might do something like that, and, but if at any point you start in a new row, you must start over in the first space, all right? All right, so the second row is the Department of Building. It's going to allow you 
to build a tile that is not a cultural building. So if you look at the colors here, there is one misprint on this, but it's not really going to apply much for the solo game. But you'll notice that this shows blue, yellow, or green, and it has a tiny little one on it. And in fact, let me show you guys. Oop, too far. There we go. Now you can see it has a tiny little one right there and a tiny little two, and a tiny little three. Yep, that's it, that's as far as I go. I lied. And that one has a one through four, you can see on it, all right? So the second row does not show a cultural building, but it shows every other type of building. What the misprint is, is this should be the police, that should be blue, and that should be pink. That's the only misprint is those two should be swapped, okay? But again, we're probably not going to build that one too much uh, in the solo game, but just in big picture, wanted to point that out. All right, you, uh, you do not have to pay the normal construction cost, but you must respect the tile's construction conditions. So again, like harbor can't be next to residential, industrial can't be next to residential, et cetera, et cetera but you don't have to pay the cost associated with it. However, if you ever reach this space here, you actually can ignore the construction rules and just build any up to a size four anywhere that you're, you can physically. And you, don't, you can ignore all the rules for construction. So that's the benefit of getting to the fourth space there. All right, so the third row is Department of Econ Economy. Get money or votes when you move into that space immediately. Okay, easy enough. The last one is get citizens from the common reserve. Well, you see that right there that I put way out of reach? Uh, that's because this is the only place you can get them, is when you move to this space, you get that many from here and you put them into here. And then they will eventually move from here into there and then from here out onto residential buildings. But we'll talk about that more in detail as we go along. All right. Then, phase eight, advance the round marker. That's all that happens in the solo game. All right. So the game ends at the end of the fifth, uh, uh, end of the eighth round. All right. Then we're going to go into final scoring. Final scoring is we have promise cards over here. At the beginning of the game, we're going to randomly get a six, a 12, and an 18 point. We're going to choose one of those to keep collectively. And by we, I mean me in the peanut gallery. We're only going to not keep one of each. We're going to draw one of each, but we're only going to keep one. We're going to score positive or negative depending on whether or not we succeeded. Plus six minus three, plus 12 minus six, plus 18 minus 12. Choose wisely, all right? Now, there are additional promise cards in the advanced game, but these don't really apply in the solo game, so we're not playing the advanced game because of that, and there may be a variant out there that includes them, but I was not privy to that, so we're just playing the base game. All right, so final scoring. We score the promise card specific that we have, all right, and then subtract your pollution from your votes. And then depending on how you did, you're going to score, or depending on, I should say, how we did, we're going to, right here. That's it. Do that eight times, whoever has the most, well, not true. So here is what I'm going to consider a win. But before we get into that, actually, we need to do talk a couple things first. There are five levels that you can play in the solo game. There is sit going easiest to hardest. Citizen, mayor, governor, senator, or president. What these levels pertain to is when we get to the pollution level, or pollution step, which is step five. When we get, or step six, as it were. Uh, when we get to pollution, depending on what level you're playing, dictates when your citizens die based on how much pollution you got that round, okay? On the easiest level, citizen, no citizens die regardless of how much your pollution increased. We're not playing that level. Mayor, one citizen dies if your pollution increased by more than five. Eh, nah. Governor, 
One citizen dies if your pollution increased by more than two. That feels like a pretty good level. Senator, one citizen dies if your pollution increased at all. Yeah. And then president, one citizen dies per point by which your pollution increased this round. Huh. No. Okay. Uh, right. I think the governor level sounds good. A citizen dies if your pollution increased by three or more. Good. I think I'm, I think I'm okay with that. So with that said, my, what I'm going to consider a win in this game is neighborhood playing on the governor level. So governor and 80 points. There we go. Okay. Now I did omit a, a fair bit of the teach regarding upgrading buildings. We'll get to that when we actually get to that part in the game. All right. The last thing that I want to go over before we actually start the game is what the uh, special abilities are of the eight cards that are out here. So we'll start with these four here, all right? If you choose this one, you immediately get a buck or two votes, two victory points, easy enough. The ur and that's the supporter. The urban planner, you immediately get to increase the size one. Whoop. Okay, easy enough. City councilor you immediately get to advance one space out here on any of these tracks. But you do have to pay the point or money, points or money, depending on what step you're going for it. And neighborhood. I'm good with that. The opponent does nothing. All right, that's what those four are, okay? I will grab the other four here and put them out so you guys can see them a little bit closer. And these aren't going to be nearly as neat as the first four. I apologize. The mayor does nothing because you're always going to go after the, uh, the, the imaginary player. Um, there's no use in taking this card. So this is essentially a blank card for the solo game, okay? The uh, industrial buildings do not produce produce pollution this round. This is, whenever you build a building, you, it costs $1 less for every building you build. Remember, you're allowed three buildings total, uh, each build, so that would be minus $1 for each, down to a minimum of zero, by the way. And building a cultural building, remember, these are free, but they require resources, minus one white resource. Ah, uh, hold on, hold on. No, any one uh, resource, down to a minimum of zero. So it can be a black resource, a white resource, or a gray resource as well. All right? All right, so there we go. So now, there are four other advanced game uh, building uh, special ability cards. We are not playing with these because we're not playing with the, uh, the promise cards. We're not playing the advanced game, which actually is on the other side of this board where you can pay promise or you can draw promise cards, et cetera, et cetera. But the problem is with that is the promise cards are all have to do with like have the most or have the least. Well, I'm playing solo, so it doesn't make sense. So we're not, there isn't a, that I saw an advanced game that actually kind of applies to that. So I'm going to wait to shuffle these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle these to start off with. Okay. And I need you guys, I think there are five of each, right? No, there are more six. All right. Choose a number. That's 18. That's 12. All right. Choose a number. We'll call it one through five. And I'm just going to show uh, one through six. First one to get three. I'm going to choose that for all three cards. Okay. Oh, uh, while I'm waiting for you guys to choose, uh, also wanted to point out, um, Albin has mentioned to me that the Kickstarter for this is going to be, I believe, next year. 
uh, for the deluxe version, kind of like the deluxe version of Clinic. I do not know the details of when, nor do I know the details of what it is. The one detail that I do know is Quan Chai Moria is doing the artwork for Small City, which I think that's going to be really, really interesting. Oh, and the reason people are saying under is number of glory to Rome's. Uh, I tend to not have a lot of those, I noticed, in solo games, so I'm just going to go one and a half. All right. Well, it looks like three. All right, so I'm going to draw three. So I've been shuffling these for a while, so that is the third card there. So that is uh, the sixes I will put over there. Shuffle these. Okay. How's everybody doing today, by the way? Allergies are killing me today. Woo! They are barking. By the way, anybody notice I'm sitting up higher? Probably not. I had to actually zoom out the camera for that third one there. The reason is, got my new chair. Oh, it's comfortable. So to this, today's first stream with it. I'm curious to see how, how well it does. So, okay. So we will do the third one on that one. Okay. So now let's take a look at what our three goal cards are. And here we go. All right. So they each have a little tiny little number up here. So that's number two, eight, and 14. Uh, here we go. Number two, it, all three uh, different size factories. So if I have that in my burrow at the end of the game, I'll get six. If not, I'll lose three. The number eight is do not your your uh, your your construction area has not expanded you did not build it up any higher and the last one number 14 is uh more than 17 bucks in cash at the end of the game i'll be honest i don't want this one <laughs> <laughs> so I'll let you guys choose between these. I think this is doable. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there. Man. You know, it's funny. I was just watching uh, Binging with Babish earlier on uh, one of his shows on YouTube. And he talks about, sorry, I haven't gotten a manicure in a while. And I was like, you know what? That's something that I could consider. Just because, you know, hands are up close and everything on this. So, eh, all right. Nice, Brian. Happy to help. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I'm sorry. I am not willing to do this one because I want to be able to expand my burrow. No. So, choose one of those, guys. The industry or the 17 bucks? I think the 17. Yes, there are more with dice. That is true, Martha. Well, if you, you guys are taking too long, so I'm choosing that one. Go big or go home. So that's going to be our end game goal. I have to finish the game with more than 17. So in other words, 18 is the magic number. All right. All right. So I will put that. You know what? Just put it right there as a reminder for us. Up out of the way. We're good to go there. All right. So now these guys, I got to shuffle every day. So we'll just. There. Kusha Gra. At least I did one thing that you liked. How's that? All right. Yes, if I fail, I lose 12 points. So you bet your. Bottom dollar, I'm going to have $18 at the end of it. I say that now. Somebody remind me I said that when you guys laugh at me and I don't. All right, we will cut. There. All right, y'all ready? Ish. That's reset there. Four bucks. We have our marker here. Those are reset. We're at zero. Let's rock and roll, shall we? Whoa, hold on. Oh. I'm, oops. <laughs> All right, thank you. Good night. I'm just kidding. Priorities. This is the first one of the month, by the way.
Might have to change the battery. Hey, there we go. Lars, cheers. Thank you for the support. I really appreciate it. I really do. It's been a rough start to the month, so I am very, very grateful. Thank you very much, Lars. I think Lars is in chat. I think I saw Lars. Did I not? Somewhere? Maybe? Maybe I'm making that up? Apparently I'm making that up. Well, regardless, thank you, Lars. I appreciate it. Go to pledge right, right there. Do that. God, I am terrible. There. Do that. Okay? I appreciate it. All right. All right. That's motivating. Seriously, that feels good, man. Thank you. All right, let's go. Here we go. So the first one goes, you know what? I realize it's a small city. It's a, that's a cool little mayor. In every, we're going to get rid of the mayor. Come on. Yeah, it's an elephant. All right, so the first one, unavailable to us, okay? So the uh, cheaper build, the mediator, not available. So the mayor is visiting the mediator. So the second one, cultural buildings, one less resource. Uh, expand our urban planner, free, $2, free. Well, there you go. All right, so these are going to be the four that are available for the next turn. There we go. All right. Here we go. Ah, there. There's Lars. All right. Good stuff. Digging the new chair. Not, you know what, though? The, the leaning back, I got to remember how to do this. Hold on. I don't want to be able to lean back. So there. Ah, there we go. Cool. Still learning all the stuff. Man, it feels good, though. <sighs> so much better. All right. All right. So let's begin. What time we got? Oh, we'll call it dead on 4 o'clock. All right. So phase one. Phase one. All right, so we need to choose one of these. This one's unavailable. That one does nothing, so we're not going to choose that. So it's either uh, choose the uh, cultural building. Now, what is it we're going to want to do? That's a really good question. Uh, I mean, we're going to want to build. We're definitely going to want to build commercial. I would have chosen that if that were available. Uh, expanding, really not a bad idea to be able to begin, but it costs two bucks. That's the problem. The order in which those came out uh, kind of sucks for us. So, uh, I don't mind being able to build one of those for free at the beginning of the game. So yeah, we'll, we'll choose the architect, I think. All right, so uh, you know what? Actually, how about we do this? We'll keep the mayor visiting there, okay? That's why I had this. It was phase one, choose. All right, phase two, no, the elephant does not come with it. Although we might be able to talk to Albin about that, I'm just saying, for the Kickstarter. All right, so the second one is build. So remember, our build is build up to three buildings or build one and expand, okay? All right. I mean, we could expand. That is true. Uh, ah, now you got me questioning that, damn it. Because we're not going to be able to build a cultural building in the first round if we don't do that because we, the, we build and then we expand. Um, and so the question is, or, well, move citizens actually, but and then expand. So the question is, do we... But Kushigra makes a fair point that if we don't do this, we're not going to be able to do it until round three at the earliest, right? Ah, damn it, I had my mind made up. All right, all right, I will go with the peanut gallery, partially so that I can blame the peanut gallery if we don't succeed. So there we go. So I need to pay two bucks, done. And that goes, whoop, done. The reason I pay two bucks, it's the uh, uh, action that's directly across from the mayor. Free, free, two bucks, done. All right, so now we're gonna be able to build. So we can build up to three things, but let's go ahead and talk about uh, building now. So again, this is, let me grab my little cheat sheet here. 
All right. A level one residential require, has no requirements. And citizens are going to move into residential level one buildings by themselves. So I could build up to two of those because of the fact that I have two bucks left now. Or we're not going to be able to make any money if we don't... Ooh, the, oh, this is tough, actually. I don't know if I wanted to spend the two bucks to do that. Oh, all right, but we're going to go with it. So remember, we're going to get money from... We don't get money from tourists because we have no tourists, right? So the only way we're going to actually get money is here or advancing here, which is going to cost us either victory points or money. We don't have any victory points to begin with. Now we will gain some victory points. <sighs> Commercial zones. Yeah, wow. And I can't build cultural buildings without resources. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna mulligan my own mulligan. I'm gonna stick with that, so I'm not gonna be able to blame you guys on this part. So I'm gonna keep my two bucks this is going to be too important, I think. I'm going to build a level one cultural. And the reason I can build a level one cultural, I will show you guys this. Here, let me, there we go. That'll work. There. So let me show here. So a level one cultural building there costs one resource. But because we chose this one, we don't have to ha uh, have any resources. So this is going to be one of our builds, and it's going to be free. Now, the purple building is technically a uh, cultural building as well. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build, do I put it there, do I put it there? I think I'm gonna put my cultural building right there. So that is one of my three builds, okay? Another build, Now I have a decision to make. Let me show you what this decision is, okay? If I choose to build a level one residential here, it will expand next round to a level two, uh, in, or a, le a level two residential. And let me explain why, because this is the, one of the, the core concepts of this game, okay? This square that is the residential is in, in the influence zone of this cultural building, because remember, it goes all the way around, so it's in this influence zone, and this cultural building, City Hall, goes all the way around like that. So this one, it, this spot is actually in two different cultural zones. So it's influenced by two different buildings. So if I wanted I could build a level two straight away because that square, one spot, is influenced by two different cultural buildings. I hope that makes sense. And remember, this is going to allow me to get more victory points. However, when we, uh, whenever citizens move, they will, after moving, they will move from City Hall into a level one residential. So that will free that up, which allows more of these guys to come over to allow me to have more citizens. In addition to that, uh, this will automatically expand for free without having to pay two bucks for this building. Because remember, it's a building per square that it occupies. So I, even though I can, I'm going to choose to build that level one there. That's going to cost me one buck. I hope all this makes sense. Then, you know what? 
This is either going to be foolish or smart. I'm going to build another residential there. That is my... Uh, that or a commercial. Uh, because that's also influenced by two cultural buildings. The question is, if I were to build it there, it's only influenced by one cultural building and it won't expand. Uh, yeah, the, and that's the what Brian says. Uh, oh, I need to bring up chat and the other camera here. I apologize. There we go. Um, one thing I want to double check. I'm debating what to do. Okay, I know I'm going to do that. That's for sure. So the question is, do we do a commercial or do I do another residential? Yeah, exactly. And, and Martha uh, and Kushigra both say commercial. And I think that's fair. So if I were, I think placing this no. There would be good. Is it there? Uh, again, the spatial stuff is what's struggling. So the commercial zones uh, will expand once they are met by a certain... Uh, you know what? Actually, if I go there. That will be in the zone of two of those, so that will be, a, yes, I think that's good. All right, good. Oh, that's a guarantee, Tony, no doubt. All right, so that's going to cost me a buck for that. So a dollar for that build, okay, that can be placed anywhere. It cannot be placed adjacent to any of these or industrial, okay, so we're good to go on that. Cultural can be placed anywhere, and the reason I can place this cultural, even though it costs a resource and I don't have any, is because of this special ability there. And then, finally, uh, commercial can be placed anywhere. However, it will, exp it will upgrade once it's adjacent to two different uh, residential. So, I, that costs the dollar. That costs the dollar, that does not, but that costs the resource, but again, I didn't need the resource, so the two bucks I paid were good to go there, okay? Does that make sense for the building aspect? I hope for anybody that is new to the game. All right, now, upgrading. I cannot upgrade any of these because I just built them. So we're going to forego the upgrading, although this will automatically expand if I want it to. It's always voluntary. Now in town center, that was mandatory. In small city, it is voluntary. So this will expand because it's going to be adjacent to, or it currently is adjacent to two uh, cultural buildings. And then if I build another residential, then uh, this will expand because it will be adjacent to two different residential there. Okay, but more on that for the next round. All right, so we are done building. We built a maximum of three tiles, so we're good to go. And now we go into moving. All right, so no tourism. We don't need to worry about all of that, okay? Now, after you've finished your turn, okay, uh, da -da -da -da, I went too far, I apologize. Um, Citizens cannot be moved to or from City Hall. 
Okay. Thank you, Christopher and Tony. Ha ha. All right. All right. So we have no citizens yet. We only have them in City Hall. Okay. After you finished your turn, move one citizen from City Hall onto every empty one space residence. Okay. Well, a one space residence is right there. It does not matter which one we choose. There, boom, done. Moved into a size one residence. Okay. Done. But then, after all players have finished their turn, place one new citizen from your career center in City Hall, i.e. here, career center, unemployment, whatever, okay? For each empty factory space in your borough, okay? I have no factory spaces. So in other words, I have no jobs available. We're done. Okay? One thing I want to check real quick. All right, yep, done. Next phase. Get your income. Okay, good talk. Next phase. <laughs> uh, vote. Ah, here, we do have something now. All right, so we have one residential and we have one worker, one citizen in that residential, that's where one vote. 79 points to go. Done. All right. So now, pollution. For every citizen in your borough produces one pollution. For every good created, one pollution. Okay, done. Then, a citizen dies if I created three or more pollution. I did not. Done. Now, we can do something. Hmm. What do we want to do? I could make a case spending that point that we just got to get $2. Or I could make a case for the spot up above it right there to be able to build a level one, a single uh, it's free. It does not cost us any money. Well, in a sense, it's going to cost us a point to do it, but we don't have to pay the dollar to be able to build a, a something out there. So it could be another commercial or it could be another residential. All right. Does that make sense? I mean, we could get another resource, but one resource isn't going to help us right now. Uh, Yeah, ah, money, because I, mm, I think being able to put out another residential for a point, I could put out a level two residential, no, a level one, sorry. And then I would immediately be able to expand my commercial. Uh, do I want to? Hmm. Choices, choices. So uh, hold on, let me make sure of something. You okay, bud? All right. Uh, I feel like I missed something here. Hold on one second.
Hold on one second. I know what I forgot. I know what I forgot. Give me just one second. I did forget something. Maybe I didn't. I feel like, and I'm total brain cramping right now, so I apologize, but being able to move, you can't move uh, citizens from City Hall during the move phase, but I feel like you, when you build, you should be able to move them, and I am drawing a complete and total blank. Christopher? No, maybe I'm, no. Hey, Jonathan. There's nothing that I'm seeing. I'm completely, I feel like I'm totally brain cramping right now and I apologize for the silence guys. But yeah, whenever you build, I, oh my God. Yeah, no. So for the first round, you, the only time, okay. So at the beginning of the game, you have three citizens that are on City Hall here, okay? You're all, yeah, you only can move citizens from City Hall after the move phase is done and citizens come from City Hall and move on to level one residential and that's it. That's the only, and then from there, any empty industrial, you bring, for every empty industrial spot, you then bring from the career center into City Hall. Or for each empty factory space. So, industrial, factory. Yeah, only in the move step, right? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, but it feels like I'm missing something, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Yeah, that's it. All right. Because if so, then I think we're going to build. <sighs> I think building is going to be the right choice. Just verifying with Christopher just to make sure I'm not doing anything stupid. So I will spend the one point we just got and I will build. Is 
It's got to be a level one building. And I think it's going to be another level one residence right there. I think. Because that's going to allow us to get three more, three of our workers out. I think that's the right idea. I think so. Into round two. I'll stall for a second. By the way, uh, English breakfast today. And nobody pinged me in the stream, stream help on Slack. So I'm doing this right. It just, I don't remember it feeling this slow for the start. But I apologize, guys. Apparently I'm rustier than I thought I was. Yes, the citizen can go from residence to blue. So that will happen, and then these guys will come out and go on to the residences. Yes, Mr. Go Good Film. So these will come off. These four will go into a discard. And then these four already shuffled. The first one unavailable. So the mayor is going to go on to that one. Well, that worked out. These two are both free for me. So we can get a buck or a couple of victory points. Now you might scoff at the victory points, but remember, to advance this, which this allows us to build a level two, will cost two victory points potentially. So there's that. Hey, Krasimir. Uh, so that is a legit option, but being able to advance this, but the problem with that is we could spend a buck to get two bucks, which is essentially that, but it would move us along the track. Or we could get a, spend a buck to get a resource. <sighs> I mean, it's nice that this one that we wouldn't have even chosen was the $2 one. So there's that. Uh, I don't know. Damn. So what are we going to do? They're going to move there. And then I can move these two will come into those two residences. That's going to expand and both of those are going, oh, that's the other thing. Maybe I do another residential because that might expand. Ah, that's a fair point. Uh, eh. Hey, Rolf. Uh, City Hall will only be grief-filled if we build a factory and don't uh, have it uh, occupied. Whew. What to do, what to do. I think we take the... Mm. We're going to take the buck. Money's tight right now. All right. So now we are in phase two, which is build. So to build a level one factory allows us to get a warehouse requires us to get a warehouse, actually. So, okay, I think we're going to go ahead and build that. I think we can put it safely down here, and then we could build, I, I'm just looking here real quick, that would be That would be a level two. A level two could go to there. And the warehouse must be built adjacent. I believe, let me double check. 
in the influence area. Ah, that's the problem with that. That's right. I remember this. Uh, hold on. Ah, this is such a tight area. Um, thank you. That's what I was missing. Thank you. All right. Let me back one thing up real quick. I knew I was forgetting something. It just didn't feel right and I could not remember. I apologize, guys. So let's go back. Whenever you build this level one residential, it immediately fills with a resident. Immediately. So that will have filled. Then during building, it can move to there which will have gotten me that dollar. Thank you. Golly, that was way harder than it should have been. It's a world of difference now. I apologize, guys. So we have that dollar. So now let's go back to the very beginning of the round. Let's back that up. The beginning of round two. We have $3. We have a worker here. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah, standing up like that so you guys will be able to see that. There we go. So now we're at the beginning of the round, of round two, and we're in a little bit better situation now. We had gained one, uh, we did not gain a victory point then because that was empty. When that's empty, this will have automatically refilled there, like so. There we go, now we are caught. Yeah, I w then we would have gotten the victory point because that refills at the end of moving. Then at the, during scoring, we will have scored the victory point there. Boom, done. So then at the end of this, we then paid that victory point to then build a level one residential. Or do we do commercial? No, nope, residential, stay on target. So when that's built, that immediately comes over there. That's better. So that was here, advance, there, and now we're back here. Okay. Ah, it's embarrassing. I apologize, guys. All right. So now, we're still going to take the buck. Okay. Now both of those can expand. All three of these buildings can expand if I want them to. So let's see about building. I definitely need to build industrial. But when you build a level one industrial, it comes with a warehouse. On the one hand, it's a good thing because it gives us spots to be able to put out uh, resources. But the problem is these can only advance to a level two if the refinery or uh, the harbor, if it's in the influence. And it can advance to a level three if it's in the influence of both of those spots. There we go. All right. So now the question is, we don't have any, do we only build one? Huh, what if we only build one and expand for next round? 
So, commercial, sorry, industrial comes with a warehouse. And it will, we will produce it. However, if we don't do a level one, instead, if we were to build one of these, we would be in a position to go straight to a level two. I don't know. The benefits for uh, expanding commercial, so we'll be able to expand all three of these, not the cultural, but to be able to build, expand from that, it allows us to turn resources into money, okay? And remember, it's always voluntary. Hey, York. Man, I really want, and now I, it's so hard. All right. You can upgrade or build in any order, but um, all right. I just don't know where to put it. It's going to cost a buck. It cannot be adjacent to residential, okay? So let's go over this a little bit. This residential here is adjacent to that cultural and that cultural right here. So it's going to expand to a level two. I can expand it this way or I can expand it that way. This one is in the exact same position. However, I can only expand that one way right there. Then, because this commercial is adjacent, to, uh, is in the influence of two different uh, Residential, this can expand and it can expand this way or that way. But then when these expand, they are no longer a level one, they are a level two residential, which on the one hand is good. On the other hand, not so good because they won't get any new citizens. But I don't have any citizens because citizens will only come from empty factories. Empty factory, this guy, is going to have to move from this space and that space has to be empty for this turn. So I need to move somebody there to be able to produce it. So I'm not going to have an empty factory unless I built multiple of them. Hmm. The residents do not have to move, but may move if I wish, okay? <sighs> so let's go ahead and upgrade this just cause it's a visual thing and I think it might be easier. I'm not sure what direction that one's going to go. This one must go that way. So that is there. So the question is, do we put it like that or do we put it like this? I do not know what the best answer is. So I'm just gonna go like that. So both of those have upgraded and I hope that makes sense why they can upgrade. Two cultural buildings in the influence, that in that spot and that in that spot, we're good to go. Now, if I were to get another th third cultural building that's adjacent to one of those, it can then upgrade to a level three residence, so on and so forth, okay? All right, so this guy is currently there. This lady is right there and that there. But now the question is, what do we do with you? Because, oh boy. Well, hold on. If we did like this, the problem here, there must be a warehouse placed in the influence area. Oh, that gives us a little bit more flexibility. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. So if we were to do something like this, if we did that, that's within the influence of that, then we were to build the refinery right here. But the problem is putting it right next to a cultural building, we want residential next to cultural. So what if we put the refinery right here 
which then allows this to expand, but it cannot expand up because then it will be in the influence area of a residential. And I'm saving this spot over here for something like that. So it can expand down potentially like that, but that spot's blocked off. Yuck. Or, or, if we built it here, that's a cold, ah, I hate this. <laughs> I think we do that and we'll call it good and I'll live with my mistakes. All right, upgraded, upgraded. I could upgrade that because that's adjacent to two different, uh, to two different residential. And why not? So let's go ahead and upgrade that one. And I think, I think that's probably a better idea than putting it vertically. So those are upgraded. I have built this, this cost me $1. And that's one build so far, okay? I cannot add another cultural building because I don't have any resources. But I could put another cultural building like there and now this one would be adjacent to three different. Does that make sense? Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, that actually makes more sense. If I put it there and I put that, that would be adjacent. Yes, good call. There you go. Yep, Brian. So if I put a level two cultural like there, that would now be adjacent to three and those would upgrade. Good call. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Um, I cannot build residential here anyway. And now if I were, ooh, I, ooh, one, two. Oh, hold on. If I put the refinery here, that would build two. And then I put the harbor here, one, two, three. There we go. Yay. Finally figured it out. All right. Oh, my God. Whew. I struggle with spatial, okay? All right. So we have built one building there. You know what? Huh. What if we did this too? Build that as two. That cost a buck. That can't expand this round, but it will next round. Kazoon tight. And. A park? Because remember, pollution is negative points, right? Oh, did I? Okay, Martha, so I get that back. Two bucks, right? Oh, yeah. I had four? Yeah, so there. I think that's right. That's two builds. What do we do with the third? We are not going to build another residential right now. So no. Another industrial, I don't, th well, we could, oh, we could get two resources, right? Ah, uh, yeah, hold on. Okay, hold on. This would be stuck at a level one though. Or if we build it out that way, that will stay out of the way. And I built a level one, so I think that goes there like that. So this area cannot be residential and I cannot expand that. That would be 
a third buck. I think that's okay. Yeah, somebody's going to die if I do that, though, aren't they? Damn it. All right, we'll do a park instead. No, no, no. There. Could block it off. Put that right there. That's where the harbor is going to go. We can have a park on the other side of the harbor. Yeah, why not? That'll be nice. And that's the third buck that I paid there. Okay, done. Oh my God. Okay, so now move citizens. This one must move. Okay, done. Cannot go to get the dollar. I can go to turn in the resource that I'm going to get to be able to get money and that would be a total of two bucks. I believe that's two bucks. Let me check. Yeah, where is it? There it is. Sheesh. Yeah, it's two bucks. That one's going to go to the park for sure. Hey, Ben. So they have moved. We'll lay them down. Do I turn that into two bucks? Because I'm not going to be able to... I think so. Forgo points or a point to get two bucks? I think so. I think that one will move there. Done. That's all the moving. All right. Now, if there were any citizens in City Hall at this point, they would move to level one residential. I do not have any level one residential, so even if there were anybody in City Hall, they wouldn't come out because I don't have any. Then, after I've done that, place a new citizen from the Career Center into City Hall for every empty factory space. I don't have an empty factory space, so nobody comes in. Done. Now we get income. Income, I'm going to get one white resource, and it must go either onto a warehouse or into City Hall. I'll put it into warehouse. But then that's immediately going to turn into two bucks because I'm going to sell it for two bucks. Done. All right, now voting. I don't have anybody in residential, so no votes. Done. Oh, I suppose I should be moving Davis. Do, 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 do. Pollution. Every citizen pollutes one. So that's going to be three. Plus I produce the good. That's four. Minus one. Yep, minus one here uh, for the park. So we're down to three. So one, two, three, produce a good four. Minus one is three. One, two, three, some, you're gonna die, clown. Yeah, that is really poor. Wow. Who's dying? Oh. 
and this immediately becomes a level two park at the end of moving. So the level two park, we'll go there. So check that, after moving, that's when that happened. So now, one, two, three, four pollution, minus two is two pollution, nobody dies. There we go, so we're good. Phew. All right. Oh, what do we do? I need to be able to build industrial because I need to be able to get more people. I mean, I could spend a buck to get two bucks, so basically I just get a free dollar. I think that's a decent idea, because money's tight right now. So I'll spend a buck and get two bucks. So that's there, done, new round, done. So now, all eight of these will get shuffled up. Wow, this was a rough start. Sorry about that, guys. I feel like it's still a rough start for me. And who was it that wanted me to go for a higher uh, threshold? Just saying. All right, cut. All right, here we go, first four. City councilor, not available. No, nope. dead. Yeah. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Woo! Uh, I mean, we could choose one and just waste it, but golly. All right, spend the two bucks. Oh, that was nasty. That was not a good draw. All right, second phase, we go into building. I know I need another industrial. So I think I will do what I had planned, which is going to be there, and that comes with a warehouse. That'll be a buck for that, okay? I cannot build a cultural. That's going to expand automatically. If I want it to, remember it's always voluntary. So let's go ahead and do that so I don't. And because it's solo, I don't mind kind of mix and matching, upgrading and building. But if you're playing multiplayer, it's probably best to everybody, you know, show your work and the rules uh, explain that that it's, uh, it's just, just the, because you guys have seen, it's easy to make mistakes. So that was a free upgrade because that is adjacent to the refinery, okay? Now, if I build the harbor, this will go straight into a three. And the three is that, but I don't know that I need to do that right now. I have it planned out where it's going to go and everything, but I don't think I need the black... Well, the black resource gets me seven dollars. Hold on. No, five bucks. It's two, so two, three, and five bucks. Five bucks is nothing to sneeze at. So if I were to spend my last dollar to put that, that will become a level three immediately. Hmm. You know? 
That gets our money engine going. We need money to be able to build. I think so. I think we try that. I'm not promising it's the right thing, but we'll see. So what we will do is I will build that there. And that was my last dollar. So I spent $1 for this. It comes with a mandatory, mandatory, but free uh, warehouse. Then I spent a second dollar to build the harbor. This is now adjacent. Both of these are adjacent to that uh, industry space. So that industry space actually went from a one to a three immediately. And that is two builds. Now I can do a third build. However, I have no money and the only thing that doesn't cost money are cultural buildings and I have no resources so I can't do that. So yeah. All right, so we're done building. That was two builds. Unfortunately, that's it. All right. Next phase is moving. Now, the park I think we keep there because, well, I guess I could stay on that, uh, because I want this to become a level three park. That reduces three pollution right off the top. I think that's good. Keep in mind, pollution never goes down. It just, it reduces how much you pr produce in a given turn. Subtle distinction, but an important one. All right. So both of these cats got to move. Oh, hold on. And during moving, this actually becomes a three. After moving, so that's done there. So that one moved, they have not, and they both must move. Uh, Get a buck? That seems like a good idea, seeing as we have none. Now, the question is, what do we do with this one? Oh, that's moved, so we're good there. Do we go get a white resource? Because we're going to need white resources to... Two white re Here, hell, instead of me explaining it, let me just show you. There, for the various things. Okay? So, all those resources, when we build the clinic... Nobody dies anymore, so we don't need to worry about that, but that takes five resources. That's a ways away. Uh, two white resources, or a gray and two white, or do we worry about the black ones and start selling them? I don't know what the right answer is here. Rotate the harbor to the left. This hurts my eyes. Why? Why? It's just a little... It's, not, it, it's a lake. All right. Fine for you guys. Fine. So there. We have a little coastal park at least. Okay? Is that better? Sheesh. All right. So what do we do with this one? It's going to be a pollution no matter what, right? But I think money is going to be important because it's going to tie in with next round. I think, I think so. We'll see. Everybody has moved that's going to move. That's it. All right, nobody comes in. Now, how many empty factory spaces do we have? One, two, three. Whoop. So, one, two, three. That'll do, pig. That'll do. I could produce with both citizens, right? Instead of getting the dollar. I guess I could. I mean, I could move this one instead of getting the buck to come over there. But without, I mean, we have no money. You know what? That does the exact... Work with me on this. All right, done. Final answer. So that's it for moving, okay? So now produce. I get a buck. 
and I get a black resource. A black resource can go to either of those warehouses or into City Hall, but you know what? We'll keep it local. There we go. That's it. Victory points. None. Pollution. Remember, these do not count yet. So we have a total of one, two, three people. And we produce the resource. That's going to be four pollution. Minus three for this park. That's one pollution. Whoop. All right. I'm, I'm good with that. So now, here's the thing. I can, if I want, spend this dollar to be able to get a white resource up here by moving one of these up to there. And by not going there, it got us another one into City Hall. Do you see Kushigra? Why that? Why? Okay. There you go. We gotta have money. But the problem is, I don't believe we can go negative. <laughs> uh, I mean, it doesn't say you can, but it also says, you know, but I'm going to say no. So our options are get a resource or do nothing. But we have new money to build. But if we get... Oh, mm. I think we... Oh, that's so gross. I think we do nothing. I think we do nothing for this round. We go round four, and here we go. I hear you, Mr. Good Film. I could have, but, and that may have been the smarter answer. Oh, really? Really? The one thing that I really wanted. I can't, and yes, if I were to, before I flip anymore, if I were to do this, I would be able to place a cultural building at a minus one, assuming that it's going to be one of the two sides, right? Um, to be able to expand the residence. But the problem with that is I have no money to build. I mean, no money to build. And at least this way, I would have a dollar to be able to, all right, fine, screw it. So that will go there and I will get a white resource and we'll see if this is a terrible idea. All right. Well, I mean, that was the whole point of doing that. So we will go to the architect. So we're going to build one building and expand our borough, okay? So, the one building is going to be a level two cultural building. So it's going to be one white resource and another white resource there discounted to be able to build the level two. The level two will go right there. And now we're done building. So both of these will expand to threes because just to make sure that this is clear. This space, so this right here, okay, this building 
actually, is in the uh, influence of that, that, and that cultural building. This building is in the influence of that, that, and that cultural building. Three, so it, therefore they can each upgrade to threes. They must respect their already uh, where they've built. So if we take a look at this, so this level two has to respect that. So my options, realistically, and I, I honestly, literally, this is my only option for one of them, okay? That one, it must, I, well, it cannot go, it cannot go like this, because that would be adjacent to both of those, which either of those is a no-no. It cannot go three straight out because it would be in the influence of that industrial that's or factory, and that's a no-no. So therefore, that is the only legal build or upgrade right there. However, this one, we have a whole lot of options here, right? Let me, let me show you here. We could go three like this, which is probably what we're going to do, but we go three like that. In fact, that's literally, uh, that's literally all we have, so never mind, we don't have an option. Whoop. After that, we have options, but there. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? I hope. So those expanded for free. We place this for free, no money, but it cost us the two white resources, but it was only one resource because this allows us a discount of any one resource. Okay? All right. Cool. So, sorry, that was building. Now we're up to moving. All right. Well, the parks, as far as it goes, well, we need money. So that one is, and we'll go there to be able to sell that resource. So moving from there to there, so that spot is not available. The black spot is not available. So now we have a couple of options, right? We could get a couple of resources. We could get two white. We could get a white and a gray, whatever. Or we could get three victory points, because, you know, points are good, all right? Uh, the Kickstarter is going to be coming, uh, deluxe edition with artwork from Quan Chai Moria, time to be determined. Albin's uh, not in a rush on it, all right. All right, so what do we do? I don't know. I do not know. Three, one, that gets us those, and we don't have to produce. That would give us a gray, and we would need two white. Ah, boy. I don't know what to do. I think we need resources, but I got to worry about death, right? Three. Four, five, minus, no, no, nobody die. I, th oh man, this is tough. I think that will go there. And I think that will go there. And we have got to build residences next turn because we need more workers. I think that's it. Oh. No, they will not move into residentials, Martha, because there are no level one residentials. All right. So that's done. I don't feel good about it, but three, four, five, minus three, two. Yeah, we're good. All right. Oh, I don't know why I switched to that. Sorry. So there we go. There, we're doing that step now. So 
we're going to produce a grain of white. Then we're going to sell that for five bucks. That's our income. Done. Okay. No votes, because who needs victory points, apparently? All right. So now pollution. One, two, three, four, five, minus three. That's two pollution. Nobody dies. All right. City Council now. Moving up here. So now we have some interesting decisions here, I think, right? We have five bucks, no points, but five bucks. So we could spend a buck to get two, po uh, to get two points or two bucks. We could spend two bucks to get two white resources or another gray. Two white is awfully interesting because that would allow us to build a level three cultural building, all right? Or, We could build a level two building if we advance this. And what is a level two that we could build? Well, I mean, we could build a level two residence, okay? But that doesn't get more citizens out here, but we could build a level two right there. That would be a legitimate build because that's adjacent to two cultural buildings, okay? We could build a level two commercial. No, we could build a level one commercial. We could build a level one industrial. I think commercial, right? Ah, I don't like either. I think taking resources makes more sense. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll spend two bucks. Now, whenever you advance, you cannot take the row before it. I don't know that why you ever would, but I'm just, oh, important to note, could not. So remember, that's a level two. Must be a level two. Can't be a level one unless you reset it, which I guess technically you could reset it to go back to that one because you always start new column in row one, right? Hmm. Anyway, so two bucks for two white resources. And even if we didn't have room in our warehouse, we do have room in Cite Hall. Oh, back up. I missed a step. Uh, empty industrial. I have two. I only have one spot. So only one will come. So we didn't have room there. I apologize. All right. So that was, wow, I am slacking here. So we got pollution, boop, boop. We are into turn five there. And we will shuffle every day. All right. We need 18 bucks. Still need 80 points, just checking, making sure that didn't change. Oy. But hopefully we start rocking and rolling soon. Whew. I'm not worried, you're worried. <laughs> All right. No cut this time. All right. Here we go. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. All right. Let's see. All right. I mean, in theory, yes. Okay, that, that, that actually is a perfect spot for the opponent. Okay. Well, that was about as good a draw, I think, option-wise here. Every, every build, right? Every build. Make sure I'm not lying. Who is that? That is the mediator. For each building tile, they build this round. I think that's a no-brainer, eh? 
There we go. All right, three builds. Okay, so check this. What do y'all think of this? If I were to go a level one residential, there. Okay, that's free because it's minus a buck and that only took one spot. So that will go. So one person will come out. Then I will spend $1, follow me on this, for a level two commercial. I'm building a level two commercial because as long as one of the two spots that it takes is direct in the influence of, resi of two different residential. So if I were to do that, that is in the influence of two different residential. One there and one there in that spot. So it normally would cost two bucks, but only costs a buck. There we go. Okay. That seems good. That's two builds. Now what do we do with the third one? We don't need unemployed right now, right? So if we did another residential, it would be free, uh, a level one residential. Now this one will be able to expand next round to there if we want it to, do not have to, okay? You know what? Let me let me change one thing. This is actually going to go that way so it can expand cuz remember I have all the way out to here now that I can build, right? Uh so what do we do with our third build? Now, keep in mind, we got more people coming out. Do we look at a park? Even if it's not populated, it's still minus 1 population or uh, pollution, not population. It prevents the loss of population, right? Uh, I mean, a park's free too. Let's work backwards and make that decision. So as it, now, the third thing we could do is we could do a level three uh, cultural building because a level three requires two white and a gray. Right? So if I were to put the level three, I could do something like that. I'm not saying I am, I'm just showing you as an example here. That's a level three there. And now this will grow from a one to a three immediately. Well, next round, but you get the idea because one, two, three, all three are right there, right? Ah, but that neuters that one. And, uh, I okay, well, hold on. No. Yes. That also works. And that allows us to build a commercial. So if I were to build the, the that, but that's free either way, right? And I don't know that I need that this round. So no, I don't think so. But if we're going to produce any resources, we got to have room for them. So thoughts on that. So if we did a level one, that would get two more out, that would be five. Six, seven. Minus, uh, somebody dies. That would be, so that's five, minus three is two. So that means I could not produce any resources this turn. So I get victory points, that's okay. So yeah, let's do a level one residential. Now, where do we put it is the question. Hey, Patrick. So where do we put this? Okay, we can literally put it anywhere outside of the outer border there, right? Well, not adjacent to any of this stuff over here. But if we're planning on growing that, well, we did just say that we might be looking at putting that there, right? Uh, 
<sighs> and we want to be able to get a large, a five out of this, right? So the five for that is going to have to be then, it would have to be built like this, in theory. So where can I put this that is going to make use of these, uh, of these uh, uh, cultural buildings? Well, the problem with mirroring the bottom is I can't because the commercial's there. So it doesn't quite work, right? Or, or, I guess this could build out that way and then this one could build this way and that would actually be adjacent to three. Yeah, maybe we do that, maybe so. Yeah, I think maybe that'll work. Okay, let's try that. Cool. And that's free because the minus, oop, the minus one right there. Cool. Hey, York. All right. I think I'm cool with that. All right. So that's, we're done building. Now, again, I just built, to be clear, what three did I, I built this? I built that and I built that. So those cannot expand. Question is three, one, two, three, no, one, two, three, no. Can this expand? No. That's already maxed out. That's adjacent to just one that stays where it is. Nothing's expanding, we're done. Okay. All right, so now we're into movement. Okay, let's go back to this now. I think, call me crazy, but I think I'm gonna do this. I think so. Because it keeps us from having anybody die right now. So if we're done moving, this will happen, there and there. Then I have four empty industrial, I'm sorry, four empty factories. There's two empty spots. So these two, or any two, will come back out. There, that's moving. Now we get our income, okay? Done. <laughs> There's nobody on commercial. There's nobody on industrial, no income. However, now we get victory points for uh, residential. And because that is a level three, so that's gonna be six points. Because there's three on there, so it's going to be six points. 74 away. All right, pollution. We did not produce any goods, but we have five people. Five citizens, minus three pollution. That's two. Done. Okay. So now we go here. So we have two bucks that we cannot. Uh, Kushaga uh, asks, Oh, hold on. You are 100% correct. Let me back up. I forgot that as soon as those are built, those guys come out. My mistake. So hold on. So if that's the case, what do we do? Do we, I don't want to produce any goods. So we just get a buck each. I think that's what we would have done, so that would have been two extra bucks. Good call, good call. 
There we go. Or, or, nine points. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, that's hard. Hard to pass up the points. Okay, never mind. So these guys instead will go there and there. Six points for that, three points for that. So it's actually nine points back here. So now, getting back to that, good call. And then, <sighs> you're right, you're right, you're right. So hold on. Let's, let's back this up. Let's back it up there. So hold on. Yeah, I'm good with that answer. So we got nine points for this. The reason we got nine, uh, I'm sorry, nine points, because we got six for that and three for that. But at the end of moving, these two will have come out. I apologize. The order in which that happens, that will have happened there. Then four new come out. Two came out, two more come out. That's where I screwed up. I think that's the right thing to do. Because, but the problem here, let's go back now to pollution, because now I kind of screwed that up. But not exactly. And I'll explain why, because there is one little side rule that I forgot. Uh, okay. So let me back up that. Okay. So I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven citizens. I produced no resources this turn. Seven minus three is four. Four, one, two, three, four. Four is bigger than two. However, nobody dies until one burrow, or in this case, my burrow, hits 10 pollution. Once you hit 10 pollution, somebody can start dying. And I'm pretty sure four is bigger than two, so somebody's going to die. So therefore, we will choose one of the people out here, and we'll go in. There's the cemetery. There we go. Whew. Okay. So now that that's done, that happens. We have two dollars, and we have a bunch of points. We have no spots on our board for resources, so we cannot choose that spot. We can spend a point for $2. We could build a level two something for $2 or two points. Now, important to note, it is not one of each. It is that you cannot mix and match. It's either all points or all money. One of the builds is going to be a level three cultural building this next turn. And maybe we do another, uh, one's gotta be a park, has to be a park. Now, there is one more thing. No, you only one death. I, I, yeah, one citizen dies if your pollution increased by more than two. It's not for every two. If we were playing the president level, that would be, I, four would have died. So now, I can do a level two park for free. Well, it would cost me two points or two bucks if I built a level two park. Remember, I told you there was an exception for being able to build level two and level three parks. Those are them, there.
And I guess technically I will have gotten two more points because they were on individual buildings. So that's 11 points that turn got me. You are correct. Six, three, one, and, well, and one and one. Yeah, so that's a total of 11 points. Good call. Sheesh. So what do we do? So I think we do a park, a level one house, and a level three cultural. I think so. I think that's what we do. So I don't need the money. I don't have room for the resources, unfortunately. So if I were to spend two points to put out a level two building, what would it be? Could be a level two park, because if it's a level two park, then that's one less. I think maybe. I th oh, wow, really? I think so. Because I don't want people to keep dying. I think so. So I'm going to spend two points, put out a level two building. The level two building will be a park. And that park will go right there. Oh, sorry. So I put that park right there. Because now, I think I'm happy with what we're going to be able to do this turn. I think so. So going into round six, get rid of these. Okay, so... Those are done. Eh, I'm all right with that, I think. Well, I think we take the buck. All right. Okay, so we're building. Well, I know I want to do the level three cultural. That's going to be one of them. So that's going to be two white and a gray. Now here's the thing. If I were to build that there, that is adjacent to three, right? Or if I were to do something like that, that's now adjacent to four. One, two, three, four. And all four, this is in the influence of all four of them, so that could expand to a four building. Problem is, oh, and that will expand, oh, God, and that will expand to a three? Yeah, that's where we're doing. That's one, that's one of them. That's perfect. All right, so that's one. And now that I've built that, this one here is going to go from a level one residential to a level three residential because, I'll show you guys, a level two, if I build it like that, that's now adjacent to three. So it goes from a one straight to a three. This one will go from a one to a two. And we're still at one build. I'm 
going to put that upside down so you guys realize he's dead. All right. Turn it 90 degrees. Are you saying this one? Does that matter? Because that doesn't work. Oh, and this will turn into a 4. I know, I need one. So that was one build. I know I'm going to do a level one. I think that's going to go here. I have a plan for the level five right there. That's two. That immediately gets this person out, so I don't forget that again. What do I do with the third? Well, what if I were to do that? There. If I did that, this will expand, right? Yeah, that will expand to a level three. Huh. Well, hold on. I don't think I need to put that there. What if I did that? Because now that will be able to go from a 2 to a 4, which I'll be able to sell resources for victory points then. Think that makes sense? Yeah, I like that. And that will go there. And that cost another buck. So that was one, two, three. I'm all right with that. Let's see how that works out. All right? I mean, people are going to die. It happens. It's not the end of the world. Well, that sounds callous, but, well, let's see how it goes. Now we're going to move. All right. We need points. I need resources. That's 10 and that's 6, but I only that only leaves one person producing. Well, the 10 is for sure going to happen, right? If we were to produce... Hmm. 
13 points, that would be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, minus 5, that's 5, and one, 5 pollution, and one person would die. No, 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 not true. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, one person would die, and I would have 7 pollution. All right. And we need money. Well, we do need money, right? Or, or, better yet, how about we do this? I think that's where we go. That gets us three dollars, two resources, and ten points. Check that. Thirteen points. Check that. Twelve points. I'll get it right yet. Yep, that's it. So then, these two will come out there. We have one, two empty factories. One, two. All right, that's the end of moving. Now we get our income. Our income is going to be $1, sell this here, total of $3. We get a black and a gray. That's all our resources, okay? You are correct, Lars. Hold on one second. Whoop. That should have, that wasn't built this turn, so it's adjacent to one, two, three residential. That'll grow, and as soon as it hits three, that'll be the fourth one, so it goes straight from what it is to a level four, that was the whole point of doing that. Thank you. There we go. So now, hold on. So now, instead, We could sell that for three votes. No, I want to save it. So that should have expanded. So we still would have done the same thing, I think. Sell that for two bucks. Hold on. Sell it for two so that that's empty so we can sell the black. And the black will be for seven votes. So that's seven points. So the question is, do we get a buck or do we then sell for points? And we need money. Nope, we're done. That's good. All right. Yeah, that's good. So then, population, uh, yeah, uh, votes. So we're getting one, two, ten for a total of 12 points. So 12 votes. 12 to 21. Okay. Now pollution. This is where it gets kind of ugly. All right. Dead people don't count. City Hall doesn't count. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Produce two for a total of twelve. Twelve minus five is seven. Seventeen. 
Seven's more than two, somebody dies. Well, he did. There we go. All right, so now up here, we have four bucks, 21 points. We could build a level three building, get, so we could do either of these or either of those. What say you? Trying to figure out if we can build a level three commercial. I don't think we can. I don't see it. Level three industrial, we can't. Level three park, we could. So I don't think the level three makes sense. What's the plan to get the money we need? We haven't got a uh, sell. Uh, so what if we were, hold on. We need more commercial. There's no doubt about that. Well, I know we can build a level two, possibly a level three commercial next turn. Straight, just straight up, just build a level three commercial. So the question is, do we do that? and spend either three, I think we spend three points to get two gray. Then we'll be able to build a level five. Oh no, but we're trying to sell them, right? Ah. We're gonna do that. We're gonna spend three points, one, two, three. We're going to get two gray resources, and we'll see if this bites us in the butt or not. Penultimate turn. All right. Have a good one, York. I mean, we definitely need money. We got, I mean, we have two turns to get a bunch of money. So let's see how it goes. We'll cut this time. See how it goes. What? We'll see. All right, expanding, I'm okay with that. That's unavailable to us. Intriguing. Also intriguing, very intriguing. All right. Whew. All right, so what can we build? Cultural wise, here's where we're at. Hold on. There we go. I think that'll work. So cultural building, we have three gray and a black right now, okay?
we are one weight short from building the clinic. We are one weight short on both of those. Okay? Just, just showing you guys. All right. If we build, we could build a level three commercial, which would allow us to sell goods for money and then money for victory points potentially, or just straight money. Ah, I don't know. I think this makes the most sense to save money for building, right? So now what are we going to build? So if we built a level one residential here, that's free. That comes out. We could build a level three commercial immediately right there. That costs us two bucks. The problem is, Kushigra, we can't build the clinic. It requires two white. We have no white. So now we're going to be able to sell a lot of goods for money. What do we do with a third build is the question. What do we do with a third build? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think a park makes sense. Cultural can't. I could do a level two commercial. I think that's what we do. For a buck, because that's next to two residential. So there we go. Done. All right. Now we move. All right. All right. So let's see. We need money, right? One. Lay these guys down. They have not moved yet. Two. Three. Cannot choose either of those two spaces. Four. Whew. 
Whew. Five. There was somebody on the gray, so I cannot go there. I think that's where we leave it. Mm, hold on. I think so. I think that's it. All right, later, Jonathan. I think that's where we leave it. Whew, okay, all right. So now, it's not pretty, but income. Start with this one. Sell so that for cash, which is going to be three bucks. Sell that for cash for three bucks. Sell that for cash for three bucks. And then sell this. Check that. Make that five bucks. So three, three, that's 11. And sell one of these for five votes. 11 bucks and five votes. 11 bucks and five votes to 23. Okay. So let's, oh, and I produce one black there. So done, 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 and I get a buck. Oh, he had to move. Uh, another dollar, it'd be 12. All right. He died. So that was, I think that's legit. That's okay. Yes. I think so. Yep, at the start of the moving round, exactly. So that's legit. So we're good there. But now, he'll come out there. So these guys will all lay down. All right, so now victory points for residences. We have 1 and 10 for a total of 11. 11, that's 34. Okay. Pollution. Uh, uh, this may tickle a bit. Oh, hold on. And I have 3 empty, which will come in there, but there's only 1, so there. Okay. So now pollution, they don't count, that doesn't count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Produced one, twelve. Minus five is seven. Seven and seventeen is twenty-four. Done. Okay. All right. So now, now becomes an interesting question, I think, right? Yes. So, we can produce two black ones if we want. But what can we do with them is the question. Well, looking at our board, if we place one residential right here, we can extend this to a four and we'll be able to turn one of those black into seven votes. So seven points for that. That would leave us two more black ones. We cannot use that, but we can do this, which would give us five bucks. Five and 13 is 18. Minus one, we're at 17 for building the one residential. So we're a buck short right then. 
but we would need to go back four points. <laughs> Is it worth it? I don't know. Because we have the one black that we can sell either for five bucks which is probably what we're going to do for the cost of one. So it's a net $4. So we're short a dollar, but we have spots on our board to be able to get more money. So we're okay there to be able to hit the 18, okay? So we can hit the 18. Now it's just a matter of how can we get the most points? So how do we get the most points? I mean, we only want $18. We don't want more than that, right? What will get us points? We can load up residential, so we need more residential, which means we need cultural. We can't. Ugh. I honestly think that's our best bet. I might be wrong, but there, we'll spend the four points. One, two, three, four. And we'll get two black resources. And that Disc is locked for the remainder of the game, but it's a cow's opinion at this point. It's moo. All right, so final round. Boo. Boo. Okay. Hey. Okay. All right, let's build. So no, pro uh, any goods I produce this round don't produce pollution, but whatever. All right. Well, I'm gonna spend a buck to build that. And when I build that, there, that will come out. And now both of those will expand for that $1. So that'll become a four. And this will become a three. Okay. So that's one build. I don't know what now. Uh, I mean, two parks? I think so. I don't see anything else that is going to benefit us. That's two points either way, right? Because money. So maybe I just do the one build and do that. That's moot, but, you know? Oh, I didn't kill anybody last round? I should have. My bad. Uh, well, if that's the case, then we'll kill that one. There we go. All right. I think that's all the building we do, honestly. I can't see any other way that something benefits us. So, let's move. All right. One.
2. Three, so that is going to be, let's see, that'll give us five bucks, so we're a buck short, oh, yeah, there we go, that's all the commercial, that's 18 bucks. Then, there, 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 I think so, I think that's it, gosh, all right, I think that's it, so. Provided I got all my stuff right. So now income, here we go. Income is going to be, get a buck. I'm gonna lay these down as we get it. So there's a buck. Sell one of these for points. This is going to be seven votes. That's gonna be seven votes. And that's going to be five bucks. So that's 14 votes, 14 is 44. That's all the commercial whatsoever, no industrial. Now we'll get for uh, population. So we have 10 and six more, and I think that's it, yep, so 16 there and that gets us to 60. Yay! All right. Unfortunately, this happens. So now pollution, let's see. Those three are dead. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, minus five. That's six. Six means 30. Somebody dies. Okay. I mean, spend a point to get two points? Okay. All right, we go into final scoring now. So final scoring, did we fulfill this? We needed 18 bucks. We got 18 bucks, so we get 18 points. 18, that is 29, done. So we're at 79 points. I'm pretty sure that's not gonna get it done <laughs> because after we're done there, subtract your pollution level from your vote track. Uh, 30, 29, that's 49 points, 49 points, ouch. But it was fun. <laughs> oh. Well, on a positive note, hold on. Oh, come on. There we go. What do we got? Kenneth. Cheers, thank you for the support. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, mistakes were made for sure. Um, ah, it's all right. Little slow, slow start because I totally brain cramped on uh, as soon as you build a level one residence, somebody comes out from uh, City Hall. That was the thing that tripped me up at the very beginning. So, But we got it right. In the end, we got it right. So that's what matters. So there we go. <laughs> Kushigura. It's 3.30 a.m. here. I'm so pumped. Uh, so good. All right. Cool. So yeah, small city. Um, it's... This is my favorite Albin VR, but I'll be honest, after playing Clinic the other day. Yeah, and then playing the engineer workbook uh, of Albin's, the tramways. Engineer, I, man. So, I will say this. As much as I love tramways, I think I enjoyed the engineer workbook for tramways more than I do tramways itself. That's a compliment. That's not a... Because tramways won the People's Choice Golden Elephant Award a couple years ago, two, three years ago, whenever it came out. Uh, but I love Small City. I'm definitely warming up on Clinic. It's breaking my brain less, at least. And... Yeah, I'm struggling with all of these games in a good way, like struggling playing well, not struggling to understand how to play the game. So that's a compliment to the game, or the games, those three, the Tramways slash Engineer Workbook, Small City and Clinic, right? Uh, hell, Town Center whooped me. So I don't know what that says about this guy, but I digress. I think Albin VR it has built an amazing universe, I guess you could call it, with... Uh, with the small city universe that that is this ga this game, this clinic, town I mean, they all exist within this universe that he's built. I'm interested to see Quan Chai Moria's uh, artwork on this because we're used to you know Sampo, we're used to Todd Sanders, we're used to Albin Viard, and Quan Chai is going to be a serious step away from that. So I'm curious to see how Quan Chai's artwork uh, meshes with Small City, because that's the artist that he's commissioned to do the artwork for the Kickstarter that's supposed to come next year. Uh, could be later this year, could be early next year, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, he has confirmed that that's going to happen, the Small City Deluxe, kind of like a small or a uh, clinic deluxe, what happened with that. But yeah, I think the, all these games are, they build upon one another, right? They all are related to one another, but completely different. And I'm a huge fan of them. I have been since before I knew Albin. And yeah, this is, uh, this, is, this is good stuff. So I think he's done a really amazing job with the designs. And hopefully this week and by this week i mean you go back to the album vr week but obviously the protests interfered with our stream of this on sunday i made a judgment call to delay this one but the album vr week i think has done a really good job i hope of highlighting the games so yeah um yeah and this felt like small city you know what i mean like again you don't have tourists moving and tourists can be nasty in a good way, that you're causing pollution for other people's boards because each turn you can have a tourist go to the player to your left and one tourist to the player on your right. And if they're already there, they can continue moving around the table, going to different, going to work. Think of them as like, uh, uh, like contract workers. They're going to work. So when you go and produce in somebody else's a borough, they produce for you. So if I go and I produce and I sit on that black production space like here, but in somebody else's tableau, then they produce for me, but they get the pollution. However, whenever they kill somebody, if the, the player that produced the most pollution has to kill somebody, they can kill your guy and your guy comes to your cemetery. That, however, is where the, the fire station comes in because the fire station says, 
your tourists can't be killed. So that's where those, those come in. So even though that aspect of the game is completely removed, because there's no tourists, because there's not multiple boroughs, it still felt like playing small city. And, I mean, it's felt like playing clinic, even though there's no fight for turn order and stuff. So there are things that have been removed because you're only playing solo the last week here, but they still feel like the games. So, again, I think that's commendable. I think that's pretty amazing. And there's no bots to run, which I'm a fan of. Some bots are, more, are, are better implemented than others. And I think... Albin, the way he has introduced this, uh, makes me feel stupid. I mean, I didn't even get on the board here. Uh, but that just means that's the type of solo experience you want, the solo challenge you want, right? Even though you're just going for more points. I mean, clearly, I could have done better, but it makes me want to go back and do better now. So I would say... That's accomplishing what it's trying to do, you know? And Nico says, for me, it's different. Uh, it feels more like it inter it's more interactive with others, but somehow feels like the game, uh, feels like the core game playing it solo. And I think, yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll be honest. So the, the last week has been the first time I played these games solo. Uh, outside of, you know, a practice run to get ready for the streams, even though I brain cramped on that. And they still feel like the games that they're implement. Uh, they feel like the, the main game. And I, that's not to diminish the solo play. I think you guys know what I mean. And I have enjoyed playing them solo. I've enjoyed playing them multiplayer. That's awesome. Right? And they feel like the game that you're trying to play. So that's a win. So there you go. Apparently this is out of print. I mean, it's heavy cardboard, right? So, but it is coming back to Kickstarter sometime in the next, call it 12 months. So if you want it in the meantime, then... Oh! There's one other thing I wanted to show you guys. This is kind of a big deal. On this. I don't have any artwork. I don't have any of that. But in case that wasn't enough for you guys, again, multiplayer, there's the advanced game, and there are different, uh, different scorings in the advanced game. You have promise cards, and you have uh, additional um, uh, special ability cards that can come out. In addition to that, around the world, Asian city boards, expansion, The River expansion this is all small city, mind you. Uh, the Forest expansion. The Beach expansion. Small city sketches. Another expansion here. The Big Tiles expansion which is inside that. Big tiles, because there's big tiles. And one more expansion, as if there wasn't enough already, game-wise. This is uh, Godzilla. And yes, I'll show you guys, all right? Godzilla expansion. And it has a bunch of black cubes and the rules and everything that come with it. So all of that. All right. So all of those are available. And I imagine they're all going to be available in the Kickstarter whenever it comes out. I suppose I had to put Godzilla back in here. So there you go. Yeah, no glory to Rome's. I know. Told you. Not a lot during the, uh, unless there's dice involved. Or random draws. So, it's a lot of uh, a lot of potential content for small city. 
in case the base game wasn't enough for you. There you go. All right, so thanks guys and gals and everybody out there. I certainly appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumb, subscribe, go to pledgehc.com, support the show there. Uh, let's see, what else? Yeah, if you guys are on social media, heavy cardboard, all that stuff, certainly would appreciate you guys giving it a follow. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm out of here. Jess and I will be back tomorrow with musical chairs from Rio Grande. Uh, Kelly, I can't remember the designer's name, her name. Hopefully we can get her in chat for this as well, all right? So, there were a lot of borderline minor curves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so. All right, you guys have a great rest of your day. Be kind to one another. Unity. There's a reason I use that as the keyword during the uh, name of the game. Seriously, just be kind to one another. Huh? Doesn't matter anything else. Just be kind. It's not hard. So I will see you guys tomorrow at noon Eastern. That's 1800 across the pond. I'll see you all at noon for musical chairs. All right, you guys have a great rest of your day. I'm going to go play some Witcher 3 and play musical chairs. All right, have a great night. Take care, everybody. Bye. Oh. Didn't even make it onto the board. Oof. There's going to have to be a redemption stream on this one, because... Damn. Gina!